Hundreds, if not thousands of golfers could have bought the wrong driver for their game. I'm gonna tell you for why in this video. Before we look, if you've got the wrong driver for your game, why not become a free subscriber to the channel? Hit the button down there. Let's get stuck into this video. And the first reason you might have bought the wrong driver for your game is all to do with old versus new. A lot of golfers that I teach have an old driver that is functional, that works for them, that does a lot of good stuff, but they think that the new one, the shiny, sparkling new release, is gonna do a lot more for them. And I'm just gonna show you that that might not be the case. Here, I've got two Callaway drivers, one from about five years ago, and one from this 2024 release. And if I just hit a couple of balls down here on this hole, and even when we do a little bit more of a in-depth research, what we find is that this one here, from five or six years ago, produces a pretty good golf shot that goes straight down the middle and the numbers on it are 275 yards of carry with 3,200 yards of spin, albeit a little bit bottomy, but that's just one shot. Here's what I found I got averagely when hitting more shots with this one. Now, if we compare that to what the new sparkly driver does, what I see from a lot of people is that they think, well, oh, it's new, it's got this magical technology in it. That now means that I'm gonna hit more fairways and I'm going to hit this golf ball even further. But is that actually the case? Do you find that? Let's have a see what I find. A pretty good shot there, but not massive amounts of gain. That shot carried 281 yards with 2,500 revs of spin. And here's what I found after hitting some more balls at the driving range as well. So yes, there is a little bit of difference in those drivers. I'm gaining a few extra yards and I'm seeing slight performance benefits. But you've got to ask yourself, if you're willing to spend 500 pounds, are you seeing the maximum benefit from maybe your old driver to the new driver? If you're looking for three or four yards, that could be the answer. But if you're buying one of the new release drivers with its new technologies in from the manufacturers and you're expecting to see that all of a sudden you get 20, 30 yards more distance, you are becoming a fairway finding monster. Is that actually the case? Because I know a lot of golfers out there that think that just buying that new driver is gonna do that for them. So if you are buying a new driver, let's make sure that the difference in between the old and the new actually is worth it because a couple of yards might not be worth that 500, 600 pounds. It could be spent better elsewhere on your game. And the second reason you may have bought the wrong driver is because of this. These two drivers look very, very similar but they're gonna produce dramatically different results. That's because one is straight off the rack and one has been custom fit for me. And I'd be interested to know how many people actually have been fitted for their driver or just bought it straight off the rack. So why not head over to our community page and have a vote on the poll we have there and we'll post the results in the comments here in a few weeks. But upon Hitting these two drivers, we found some very, very different results. And for me, I would err on the side that most golfers have bought their club straight off the rack. Whether it's a time thing, whether it's availability of fitting, maybe even sometimes I've had customers who are scared or nervous about going for fittings. They're apprehensive of what the fitter may think of their golf game, their golf swing, the shots they're hitting. So they just go and buy a club straight off the rack to avoid any embarrassment. But what we'll see here is that we get very, very different results from two different clubs that almost are identical. The heads are ever so slightly different here. For me, I have a max head of the ST Max, which is the most forgiving head. I have a regular shaft and the, hat, the head has been cranked all the way up to 11 and a half degrees. Now, what that does is produce something very different to a club that has been tailor-made for me. So this shot here, if I just pip this one away on the 14th hole here of Formby Ladies, what we will see is that I'm probably going to get a very different result to what I would get from my driver that's fit. Now a pretty nice driver upon looks of it, but what the data shows is something very different. 
The carry at 267 is 20 yards away from where I would want my normal carry to be. The spin in the high 2000s, nearly 3000, again, isn't something that I would want. I would be wanting to optimize to round about 2200. The ball speed's not too far away, but like I say, it looked like a pretty decent shot. But now if I hit my driver that has been tailored for me, I would expect to see very different numbers. So this is a slightly different head in that it's a nine and a half degree that is set to nine and a half degrees. It's the STX model, so not the most forgiving. It has a slight draw bias. And then the shaft is now an extra stiff one, at a slightly heavier weight as well. The other one being 58 grams, this one being 60 grams. And the profile with it being the Ventus Red is also ever so slightly different to what we get there. And this now after being tailored to me should see it delivers numbers that I would be more au fait with. And for me, a better shot, the flight that I see was a lot better. And the numbers are very different for this one. We see that it's carried 298 yards with that 2,250 spin. The ball speed jumped up as well to 167 miles per hour. So we're seeing that it's over 30 yards longer. And actually, when I hit some more shots side by side and got some more data, we saw those large distances in the data as well. So that just goes to show if you're using a driver that you think might be right for you, obviously these are worlds apart to highlight those differences. But if you've got something that is maybe a degree, two degrees out, it might not have the right shaft for you, you could be sat sacrificing lots of yards out on the golf course. You could be maybe adding spin, taking spin off, making you slice it more, increasing more draw, not hitting it as straight as you could do, all because you didn't go and get a fitting. So if you are gonna go and spend the money on your driver, why not make sure that you've got the tool that is right for you and optimize it for yourself? Oh. And that is the third and final reason why you probably bought the wrong driver for your game. You want it to fix shots just like that one. And this is the most common one that I see. People have a real torrid time with their driver. It's the hardest club to hit in our bag. We slice it, we hook it, we top it, we duff it. And we think, oh, well, I'll just go and get a new one. That'll solve the problem. And unfortunately, this thing isn't a miracle worker. How we deliver the golf club is all down to us and our golf swings. It isn't all of a sudden going to make your club swing on a neutral path with the face square at the right angle of attack and the right loft. You've got to put in the work because we're probably all expecting we want to see shots like this one, but we buy the driver and we see shots just like the one that we've seen originally from our previous drivers. So if you are thinking that buying a new driver is going to solve all your driving problems i would think again sometimes it is good just to swap drivers and maybe get a fresh feel and a bit of a clear head with a new one but ultimately it's down to us as the golfer to fix our bad driving habits so if you are thinking of spending four five hundred pounds on that driver thinking that that's going to be the answer maybe think again. Check out maybe an online lesson if you don't want to see someone in person or go and see your pro, your local PGA pro, who even just for one lesson, it could be 25, 30, 50, 100 pounds, whatever it may be, it'll be cheaper than the new driver. And they could give you some insight into what you're doing with your driver swing, put you on the right road. And then when you're a little bit more consistent, maybe then's the time to buy that driver when you're actually confident that you can deliver that consistent driver swing. But until then, they aren't miracle workers. Let's remember that. So those are three reasons why you may have bought the wrong driver for your game. Go through them and if you resonate with any of them, I'd maybe think about having a look at what's in your bag and taking the appropriate steps to fix it. It could be a fitting, it could be a lesson, or it could just be getting that old driver out of the garage and giving it a try again. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and why not check out another video here on the channel.